Hello, and welcome again to Chirp Splat Guides, a rundown on how to use weapons in both Turf Wars and Anarchy Battles. Today, we're going over the Rollers, one of the most iconic weapon classes in the game. As usual, I'll be starting with the default variant, the Splat Roller. This is the first weapon in a while where we actually have to go over its moveset. Pressing R while on the ground will cause a splatter of paint to cover the area in front of you. The damage from this is calculated a bit oddly. Basically, the closer to the center of the roller, and the less distance the ink travels, the more damage it does. You can one-shot opponents if you hit with the center. Jumping and pressing R will fling ink in a line instead. Increasing your range, but lowering the width of the attacks. The damage is calculated purely by distance, and you can still one-shot opponents with it. If you hold down R, you'll go into a rolling stance, creating a wide, solid line of coverage and squishing anyone you manage to run over. You go slightly faster than walking speed, but slower than swimming speed, so it does make you a bit of an easy target. Don't count on this for splatting opponents, even though it does always one-shot. One thing to keep in mind, if you press R and then jump immediately afterwards, you'll do the wider short-range splat, but still jump to give it a little bit more woomph. I would also highly recommend coming into the practice area and test the range of your attacks with whatever roller you choose. Knowing your maximum splat range will be more helpful than any other tip I give in this video. For most rollers, you won't want to be completely melee, despite what the weapon looks like. You're strongest at a medium range using your ink flicks, you still have to be pretty close to the opponents to do this, so you'll primarily want to be flanking and sharking in order to get close enough. Rolling for the splats is generally not a good idea, as I stated earlier. Instead, you should think of it as a mobility option that will accidentally splat someone not paying attention once in a while. Your sub and special are pretty integral to your playstyle. The curling bomb gives you a method to approach opponents in flat areas. The shield, meanwhile, forces opponents to come to you, or just give you whatever objective you dropped it by. So, here's what I would suggest as a starting build. Remember, these subs can be swapped around however you want, and you can add and remove a few abilities if there's something you feel you'd like better. Though, unlike most weapon builds, I don't think there's much you want to change around here. You can throw in some ink resistance, or some extra swim speed. Otherwise, a lot of other skills won't really help. Ninja Squid and Stealth Jump are basically mandatory for the playstyle, meaning you need the swim speed to counteract the Ninja Squid. Main Ink Saver won't help you basically at all, but you'll be using the Curling Bomb enough to make the Sub Saver worth it. So now for some gameplay. In Turf War, you'll want to be covering turf using the roller. When you get in range of an enemy, you'll want to retreat usually, and either set up to go splat them with a flank or just go somewhere else. Think of yourself as an opportunist. If you see an enemy near your team's ink, run in and splat them. Otherwise, just roam around covering ground. In Anarchy modes, you're a slayer. As the match starts, use your long-range flick to do poke damage while waiting for the battle to stabilize. Once it does, start planning out a flank route. Make use of your curling bomb, or teammate's ink, to get behind your opponents. And once you get in range, pop out and start splatting. Frankly, it's a pretty straightforward combat style. I do have a few tips to add on, though. Your shield is incredibly strong, and should usually be used on objectives. You can put it on the Rainmaker platform or tower and ink it, making them nearly impossible to scale for the duration of the shield. 
unless they want a roller in the face. For splat zones, it's a great stalling tool, keeping a quarter of the zone your color. In clam blitz, it frees up all pressure when dunking on the opponent's basket. Though, situationally, you can place it on the edge of the battle to make more use of the beacon part. Uh, before you move on, if you've made it this far, please roll down to that subscription button. It really helps me out a ton. Next, we have the Carbon Roller. This variant has a much faster rolling and attack speed. It's also a lightweight weapon, so your swim and movement speed is higher. But, in exchange, it can't splat by rolling over opponents and has a much shorter range. Despite appearances though, it can still one-shot opponents, if you can get close enough. For gameplay sake, you are a more extreme version of the Splat Roller. While rolling over opponents is occasionally useful with the Splat Roller though, not so with the Carbon, since you'll bounce right off, get stunned, and splatted. You always want to be fighting with the Swing attacks. Use your extra mobility to get right up next to enemies, splat them quickly, and dip out. You have the auto bomb to distract opponents, forcing them to react to it instead of you, so you can go in for the splat. The zipcaster is basically the only answer you have for long range opponents on ledges. So use it for that, or some extra spicy flanks if they have none. Now for the dynamo roller. This will be a bit different. It's massive, slow, and powerful at long ranges. It's easily the most difficult roller to get good with. It one-shots from much further away than the other weapons, outranging most average weapons even like the splatter shot. Much like the carbon roller, you don't want to be rolling this weapon basically ever. Though while it splats if you hit someone, it's incredibly slow, making it effectively useless. Flinging ink covers a lot of ground, though it does use a lot of ink. Because of this, you'll probably want to change up your build if you're going to use this weapon. It needs a good amount of main ink saver, and doesn't benefit nearly as much from ninja squid. Swapping the sub weapon saver and ninja squid for main ink saver would probably suffice. Maybe get rid of the special saver for ink resistance? Uh, just play around with it for a little bit. You'll find something that works for you. In Turf War, you'll want to focus on ink coverage. Stay back in areas where you have a lot of escape options, cover ground, and avoid fights that you don't have a positional advantage in. In Anarchy, you are a supporting anchor for your team. Your main mission is to poke opponents, cover ground, and stay safe so your teammates can use you to jump back. Your sub is the Sprinkler, which for this weapon I actually use to sprinkle the area I'm perched at. This is because you don't really have many answers to an opponent covering the ground around your feet with ink. With the sprinkler watching over you, even if you get splat bombed or something, the hope is some of the sprinkler drops will give you a faster escape than waiting for your super long swing. The tactic cooler special, meanwhile, should be thrown at your teammates. It's much more important they get it than you. You'll want to position yourself near the objective, close enough where your ground coverage is helpful and you can assist in the fight, but not so close enemies can rush you down. If an opponent gets in range of you, odds are you're gonna lose, so positioning is incredibly important. You're better at re repositioning than most anchors though, so make sure that you make use of this, moving up to cover when your teammates push past the objective. And finally, that brings us to the Flingza. It has a slow, strong, vertical jumping swing like the Dynamo, but a fast, horizontal swipe like the Splat Roller, at the cost of having slightly lower damage than the Devoted Rollers. 
It's an incredibly flexible weapon with a lot of options. It has landmines to deal with sneaky folks trying to close in on your position and tent missiles, the most easily spammable special. For the build, you can keep it similar to the dynamo, but bring back the ninja squid. You could also go for something meme with the uh, special, but uh, this is how to win with. For gameplay, in my opinion, to get the most out of it, you want to play similar to the dynamo roller. Sit back and fling ink near the objective. Launching out your special ASAP anytime it's up. Unlike the dynamo though, if your position is getting encroached on, you don't have to retreat. Slink into your ink and use the ninja squid in your horizontal swipe to shark approaching enemies. This is made extra easy if they hit your mines. And with that, you know how to win with the rollers. If you want to see more, please subscribe. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, and if you have something to add I missed, leave a comment below. Until next time, stay fresh!